I finally got around to clearing the PMPT exam and today I'm going to share with you my insights on how to study, prepare and pass the exam for yourself. We'll first take a brief look at what it's all about, the courses and the requirements and then of course we'll take a look at the best ways that I've found to approach studying and taking the exam itself. And this will include some advice on your methodology and approach. I'll also give you a rundown on how my exam went towards the end so if you're interested definitely hang around for that. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Cyber attacks that leverage weak or stolen passwords, credentials and secrets are the world's most pervasive cybersecurity issue. And that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Security's next generation privileged access management solution delivers enterprise grade password, secrets and privileged connection management all in one unified platform. Unlike legacy privileged access management solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Start your 14 day free trial at keeper.io slash TCM. So what is it that you actually need to do to successfully clear the PMPT exam and earn this certification? First, we need to clear the PEH course, and there are also other courses that are important, but really I see the PEH as the foundation from which you're going to build your penetration testing skills on top of. And that's because it includes fundamentals like networking and scripting, and also a decent amount of Active Directory. And personally, what I think the most important part of learning is, building your own AD lab to work on. I 100% believe that if you want to be a great pen tester or a great AppSec engineer, then you should look to build things yourself. There are also other courses that come as part of the PMPT journey. We have OSINT, Privilege Escalation, and the External Pen Test Playbook. All of these courses are going to build on top of the methodology that you've created in the PEH and then expand your skills and knowledge in their respective areas. To be honest, even though I've mostly been focused on AppSec throughout my career, I really enjoy privilege escalation. And the more you learn about how operating systems and containers and applications and their privileges work, the better you'll become at doing it. It's a really rewarding topic to study. So you need to go through each of these, do the exercises and capstones and take notes along the way. I'd recommend revisiting any topics that you felt like you struggled with and remember that everything you need to pass the exam is in the course material. It's always good to supplement with extra learning, but don't go off on too many tangents. So now we know what we need to do, What's an effective way to do it? Well, my general study advice boils down to a few things. Have a time and a place to study and make a habit of the schedule. Don't neglect your sleep. And of course, there are other things we can do to be more healthy and improve our study effectiveness, but sleep is one of the biggest things to get right. Do exercises and the hands-on tasks that are provided, and of course, take good notes along the way. Unfortunately, there is a deep, deep rabbit hole waiting for us when we dive into the topic of effective study. But for now, let's focus on getting the fundamentals right, like good sleep and a good schedule that we can actually stick to, which will mean that we stay consistent, and then over time, everything else will fall into place and you'll be successful. All right, next up, we have the breakdown of the exam. You get five days to complete the practical section of the exam and then two days to produce and submit your report. After that, there is a debrief and if everything is all good, you'll receive your certification. But let's go into a little bit more detail as you probably knew that just from reading the website. During your five days, you'll have to perform some OSINs, external pen testing and internal pen testing. And to be honest, I think that five days is definitely enough time to do everything that you need to do and have a little bit of time to spare, which means that instead of having a high pressure situation where one small setback like a power outage or your VM deciding to implode would lead to failure, you actually have time to explore and work at your own pace and function as a normal human being. All good things for protecting your mental and physical health. Personally, I didn't use the two extra days for reporting, but if you have a busy life or if you ran a little bit longer in the exam, then it's definitely useful. And of course, similar to the real world where you would have some reporting time, usually a day or so, following a penetration test. I know that most of you know me as a AppSec person, but I have done my fair share of pen testing in the past and I've never had an exam or a CTF-like environment 
this close to what it's actually like to be on a penetration test or engagement. I think the next closest I've experienced is probably Rasta Labs, and that's also a really great lab available on Hack the Box if you want to check it out. But all in all, it was really nice to have something that was really hands-on, very practical, and very realistic. So, how did my exam go exactly? Well, I clicked the start button on Friday afternoon after I'd finished the work I needed to get done for that day, and I had originally planned to start on Thursday, but you know, things happen, and I decided that it would be better to start just before the weekend. Friday night went well, I was happy with my progress and made some steps forward, and headed to bed at about 11.30 p.m., which is super late for me, but I'm usually in bed by 9.30, but I got about five or six hours of exam time in. Then I got up at 6 a.m. as usual to feed the critters whose house I live in, and continued to work on the exam. I worked until about 2 p.m., then my neighbor actually popped around and ended up staying for dinner and I got totally distracted playing board games. Not such a big deal because once again I'd made some good progress and I was happy with where I was in the exam. If I was stuck or not confident I might have continued, but actually taking a break and having a mental rest after reaching a milestone or making some good progress is a really good thing to do. Sunday I continued from around 7am and then some other friends of mine swung around for lunch to catch up as we were meant to catch up for New Year's but everybody was sick so we postponed to that weekend and ended up having pizza and playing a game called Exploding Kittens, I think, if I recall. After that, I got back to it, and Sunday night I managed to crack the exam and pop the domain controller and get domain admin. So all in all, it was probably about 20, between 20 and 25 hours of work, a little more if you include taking breaks and eating, etc, etc. But if you break that down into work hours, that's probably about three days of office hours, so kind of where I wanted to be, actually. I was a little bit rusty going into the exam, but I felt like my methodology and my approach was pretty solid. Sometimes my execution was a little bit off, and I lost a little bit of time trying to fix or configure a tool or get a technique to work, but overall I have pretty good fundamentals when it comes to things like Active Directory, so I was happy being able to diagnose any issues that I ran into and continue. As for tips, if I were to take the exam again and give myself some advice, number one would be once again relaying what Heath said to me, and he said it on stream before as well, keep it simple, there are no tricks. So I made sure that I enumerated thoroughly and going into the exam, I had made a list of attacks or checks that I wanted to start with. In fact, that can be tip number two, go in with a game plan. What sites and resources are you going to use for OSINT? How are you going to structure your notes? What will you check for when you get a low privilege shell on a Linux machine, on a Windows machine? Are you going to enumerate Active Directory with LDAP? Will you try and use Bloodhound? Have you set up Bloodhound with the right collectors, for example? Will you run Responder? These are all things to think about, and if you're preparing for the exam, I'd suggest going back over the course, looking at what's included, and decide if you need a refresher on that attack, or do you just need to add it to your list of things to check so that you don't forget to try it. Tip number three is a general one. Set a timer so that you take regular breaks. I used to set 25 minutes, but I think these days I'm getting a little bit more resilient to falling into rabbit holes, so I generally now set 55 minute timers. Once the timer goes off, I get up, make a drink, move around a little bit, and if I have something else to work on, like a different target on the network, I move on to that. Tip number four is to always be curious. A lot of CTFs don't cover things like OSINT, and even once you're inside, you should be looking for loot. Check for things in recycle bins, credentials saved in browsers, password reuse, patterns that are generally used, and these are things that you should always be on the lookout for whenever you compromise a system. Dig through documents and scripts in network shares and actually open them up and read them. The most common way that I found to get domain admin during my previous penetration testing was stealing their credentials from random scripts and simply logging in. So all in all, don't just rely on technical attacks, be curious, try and understand the organization that you're attacking and always be on the lookout for things that you can loot or steal. 
Tip number five is to take screenshots as you go. For me, as soon as I pop something, I take the screenshots step by step, and that means pretty much everything I need as evidence for the report is done. This saves a huge amount of time and also means that if you lose a connection or need to re-exploit something, you have clear instructions on how you did it first time around. And finally, tip number six, if you start trying the same attack or entering the same commands multiple times expecting different results, it's time to take a break. Probably a longer break, like at least 30 minutes. So that's it for this video. I hope it's helpful to you. And of course, if you have any questions, then let us know down in the comments below, or even better, swing by one of our live streams every Tuesday and Wednesday. Catch you next time.